ladies and gentlemen, and welcome one and all to the Intel Extreme Masters Singapore. My name is Kyle Laris, and with me is Artosis for the opening of the day. How are you doing, Artosis? I'm actually really stoked about today's group, and especially stoked to be casting with you, because have we Joel? ever casted together before? We haven't. We've been at so many events together, but we actually have. just never really coincided it just hasn't, with one another. It hasn't occurred yet. No. Uh, I always have my tastes next to me, but today I have my... Calerless, Calerless next to me. <laughs> My like Calerless. English tasteless. We'll yeah. just <laughs> go with that. Although maybe, maybe not. I'm not sure. Hmm. Okay, so what do we have today for our opening game? All right, we are going to open up, guys, with Hasu Obs against Vortex. Absolutely sick match. Uh, we are actually uh, working hand-in-hand -hand with the admins to choose the best matches to show you today. We're only doing one stream. It's going to be constant. We're going to be throwing games in your face left and right. So make sure you're watching, and in fact, get on Twitter, hashtag IEM. Claris just made a little tweet. You can follow him at Claris, and go ahead and retweet that so people <coughs> have the link and stuff like that. So we want to get a lot of people watching today because this is actually a very exciting tournament. Yeah. And this weekend overall, so sick, because when you're done watching us all day long, you have to switch over to DreamHack. Yeah, it's constant StarCraft 24-7. Due to how the time zones have worked out, quite nice, actually. Yeah. So that's pretty good. Uh, we can actually go and head over and look at the brackets, I believe, uh, which will show us exactly what we're going to be seeing today. As you can see in Group A, we have Hasuobs and Vortex, MC Pig, Mafia, and Yeki, who was able to eke out a very, very impressive yeah. few games against Xenio yesterday. So, so well surprised by Yeki. Seriously, Yeki is playing very well. This group is a little bit harder to uh, predict than you would think. Uh, you know, Mafia's playing very well, and actually our next match after this one's going to be MC versus Mafia, so stay tuned for that. Now, Group B, you see Stardust up there, that's M18M, yep. uh, a.k.a. Sunlight. And then, of course, we have Tefo, the Zerg from Poland, Yu-Gi-Oh!, King Kong, Ender, and Sting, one of our very few Terrans in this tournament. Yeah, a few of these people recently joining new teams. Tefl obviously joining Dignitas recently. Yep. Very nice pickup for them. And then we have Sting joining Western Wolves. Now, Group C, we have Tarantius, White Ra, Revival, Xenio, Ninja, and Jabito. Xenio apparently is in it italics. <laughs> yeah, man, that's not Xenio. That's Xenio. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like we both think how we both think uh, italics <laughs> sound the same way. That's really yeah, nice. Man, that was impressive. But, I mean, this group, just in general as well, it's th there's some really hard dynamics to really predict here. Tarantius is one of those... Germans that can take some really yeah. nice wins off people, uh, but has been, he's not really that internationally acclaimed yeah. right now. Yeah. And uh, you know what? I feel like Ninja is a player that has the potential to top three this group. Just so you know, guys, top three get out of the group. If you're third place, you go into a round of 16. So that's an important thing to know. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, this is. I feel like Ninja has a small chance here mm -hmm. uh, to actually get out. He's very good ZVZ, and I feel like his ZVP is solid enough that, you know, given the right strategies, the right maps, uh, Tarantius and White Raw aren't going to be out of his reach. Yeah, not at all, not at all. Okay, so moving over to Group D here, we have obviously Grubby, Slivko, Pro-An, Oz, Lucifron, and Blisk. Oh, man. Again, just... These, <laughs> to be fair, these groups have actually shaped yeah. up really, really nicely. They, they super are. Like, yeah. Group D, I actually have a little problem because I have four players I want to get out of there. Yeah. I am the sickest fan of a Grubby and Slivko, okay? Lucifron I like more and more every single oh. day. And, I, I mean, those are three people that I really want to get out. And then there was one more, and now I can't remember it. <laughs> It was one of them. And it I was the one <laughs> second from bottom. <laughs> ah. I think Lucifron was second from bottom, but... Pff, I mean, oh, I hope not. Um, well, Lucifron twice? You want Lucifron to get out twice? I that, think that would be nice. Uh, no, but there's another player in that group <laughs> I really want to get. I don't know why I can't remember. I feel so stupid right now. It's but gone, man. let's gone. move okay. beyond this. Let's uh, let's talk about this first match, because we're going to be starting it pretty soon. Yep, we are. Hasu versus Vortex. Ever since WCS Spain Nationals, I've fallen in love with these uh, with our Duran brothers that we have here Oz. in the form of Vortex. Oz. I want Oz, Oz to make it out oh, of that you group. Got it. Yeah. I don't know why I forgot while, Oz of everyone. Because <laughs> I was so excited about Slivko, man. I actually... I'm, Slivko is so good. I've loved Slivko forever. Yeah, he is really, really strong. Okay. So then okay. we have... We have Vortex... He's pretty darn good at this matchup. Admittedly, some would consider this to be his weakest matchup, mm -hmm. which is really weird to say, considering he has like a 55, 58% win ratio in it. And then you have Hasu Obs, who for the longest time wasn't really that comfortable with the matchup, yeah. but then he decided to just never attack. Yeah, <laughs> and he's <laughs> so good at never attacking. Yes. I've seen him come back from the most ridiculous places because Zerg attacks into him, and he's like, 
Well, now I have not just Colossi and Force Fields and Immortals, but also Psy Storm, and then he just shreds the Zerg army. It's really, really true. And also, there can be times where he decides to not to attack to the point where he has some carriers and things. Yeah. And, I mean, if you can get to that composition, uh, sometimes Corruptors can be a little bit annoying, but... Uh, admittedly, you can also find yourself quite a nice niche if you end up going on five bases and things like that. And Daybreak is one of those maps that we're kicking off with that That's gives right. you that ability to do this kind of thing. All right. Well, the map is loading. Daybreak, as you said, I'm actually just so excited to see this map in particular because, you know, as you said, I've noticed as well with Hasswabs just not attacking very much. Yeah. And this is a map where Hasswabs can super easily get that fourth base and play a defensive game. But Vortex is so good with Broodlord and Fester. It really is. A <sighs> scary thing. Yep. Let's jump right on into the game, guys. Game number one of the day for the Intel Extreme Master Singapore. Let's jump on into Daybreak, as we do have spawning up to the northern position here in our top right-hand corner, Maus Hasu Obs as our blue Protoss. And spawning down to the bottom left, we have Mr. Carantes Vortex, one half of the Spanish Armada, spawning here as our red Zerg. And a big hello and a good morning to Infenza, our lovely, lovely observer. Where's our smile? There we go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cute. <laughs> oh, my God. I like that. <laughs> um, yeah, Infenza, very good. Up-and-coming observer in the foreign scene uh, mm -hmm. from Australia. Did the WCS Australian Oceania. Did a great job there, and he's doing a great job for us this weekend. Poor kid not even taking breaks. No, he just keeps going, man. Yeah. He just keeps plowing forwards. What a trooper. Mm -hmm. A trooper indeed. So, Daybreak, it's one of those stereotypical maps. It's that map where when you think of the current metagame, Daybreak is the prime and pristine yes. example yes. of what actually happens in it. And for the longest time, we actually saw Vortex incorporating a ton and ton of drop play against mm. Protoss. It's kind of died down now. He feels way more comfortable just going into that late game, not trying to kill a Zerg early, yeah. uh, Protoss early even. And from that point on, he does get that Broodlord Infester uh, mix out. And it's, <laughs> I mean, Daybreak's great for Zerg yeah, in the middle it's of the map. Look, I mean, the drop play he was using before, it was actually really cool, and I yeah, like yeah. it still for some maps. Like Entombed, yeah, Entombed, you know what? Yeah. Try it on Entombed. That's going to be a hard map otherwise. But Daybreak, this is the perennial map for turtling with Broodlord and Fester, so much so that, uh, you know, I think a, a lot of people's opinions on the matchup may circle around Daybreak a little bit too tightly. Maybe. Where it's like, well, when Zerg spines up that fourth base area... Yeah the maps split and you're playing long no matter what. Whereas yeah. you look at some of these other maps and it's not necessarily the case. Yeah, you're right. And actually just coming back to your point in Tomb Valley, that's a really, really good point about the drop play that potentially can occur there because Hasu Obs is one of those players that if he gets on in Tomb Valley on his Protoss against Zerg, he almost always goes one gate into three base. Mm -hmm. There's there's very few times you see Hasu deviate from that. But we're not on in Tomb right now. We're still on uh, our Daybreak. And interestingly enough, Hasu's gone for a forge in base, which is something yeah. we not see him do too much. He did not only that, but he went Forge, in base, then Nexus. Mm. And that's not how the build order normally goes. But since he has decided to like not scout until kind of late, this is going to be an ultra safe build. Like He's not going to die to anything. This is going to own up like a six pool even. Uh, so it's, it's like a super safety build. He's playing very carefully against Vortex here, which Depending upon his style, I mean, that kind of makes sense. What are the odds of him doing a two-base all-in? Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's that's very, very wise indeed. Because Vortex is one of those guys that, I mean, despite having a really, really good long game term, uh, he can, it's very rare he does it, but he can still go a little bit more shenanigan -y. He can make something happen yeah. earlier on, which is really annoying. And you want to make sure you're safe. You don't want Zerglings running around in your mm -hmm. main. That wastes so much time. It not does. only to get, like, probes killed off here and there, but also wastes time in terms of getting your tech down. Yeah. And, of course, you know, it, it is going to cost you a little bit of time not doing, like, the absolute pristine build order that you might see someone like Creator or Parting do. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, such is the difference in metagaming against your opponent and whatnot. Now, I want to know your opinion, Artosis, mm -hmm. on, on what we were seeing quite a lot at WBC, as you can see. Hasu just spotting that third base. That's useful for him. We saw a lot of Protoss just going for the four-gate warp prism harassment into a third base off the back of that. Yeah. Is this something that, like, Hasu Obs, for example, can incorporate into his build? Here? You know, I feel like it's not much his style, mm -hmm. to be perfectly frank. I mean, it's a really strong build. We're seeing it more and more, and this is definitely a map we see it a lot on, but... When I look at that build, I don't think Hasu Obs right away, right? I would That's, agree. Yeah, so stylistically speaking, I'm not sure if it's exactly him, but 
you know, they say that when you go against your own style is when you get most of your easy wins. Yeah, and yeah. that definitely does ring true uh, because your opponent may not expect that. And Lucifron, being a European who also plays against Hasselhoff a lot, that could be a good choice for him here. Yeah. And we do have the robot on the way here for Hasu. This can mean all sorts just now. We can't, won't tell just yet as to whether, but it doesn't have his third and fourth gas down just yet, so it could quite easily be an expansion. What we see from that, maybe the observer first, maybe two observer first uh, for Hasu Obs would normally mean his third base. And Hasu is the kind of oh, really nice scout here by Vortex, so on the money. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Hasu's more likely than any other Protoss nowadays just to go on to three base, sit steady. He very rarely goes for two base nowadays. Well. That's that's good to hear. I, I don't really care for those builds, yeah. so I'm, I'm happy to hear that. I've been having to watch a lot of it lately with parting and all. So, uh, you know, yeah, it's it's looking to me like it's probably just going to be an expansion here. I mean, we don't see any probes dilly-dallying around the map Ooh. trying to get pylons off. Uh, he's making an immortal. This looks to me like just uh, he's going to start that plus one armor, have the four gates, have some immortals, then make some observers and take that take that third base. And this is like your bread and butter safe way to take a third base, uh, just as Protoss in general in this matchup. Yeah, and meanwhile, we just have the lay on them off again now for Vortex, getting that speed up and running plenty of drones on the way. Currently at around 61 drones, 46 probes out for Hasu. So now the player really deviating from too much here and just clearing out this third location. So nice little move here from Hasu. Make sure that Zergling's not there so he can just you mm -hmm. know keep his opponent in the dark a little bit. That's right, but we have speed over halfway done and about 30 lings on the way. So he's going to have have a little band of uh, Zerglings to try to get in here and maybe kill that third Nexus or force a cancel at least. And wait a minute, Haswab just added yeah. four more gates. So I'm really surprised. I'm he's gonna go super for two surprised base. he's doing this actually because this isn't the most efficient build order. You could see with this. He's going for the three immortal push, but he's going to be like about a minute behind where you can hit this push. And his fourth gas was really, really late in comparison to what you would normally see yeah. from this. So he's not going to have that much gas to really compensate for a do ton you, of Do you stalking. think this could be Puzzle's old build of like the safest third base into pressure? Hmm, it could be. You know, the the immortal push after grabbing your third base is becoming way, way more common yeah. nowadays. Just they push out into the middle of the map, and even if they don't actually go across the entire map, they do force out units. But he's making a war prism, so it looks like Oh, he's starting another yeah. cannon. He's going. He's going. He that's that's all there is to it. And th see this exact <laughs> move out time is fifty five seconds it's, later yeah. than the absolute quickest you can get out with three immortals in a lot of centuries. So Ooh. it's a little bit slow, but it will have that plus one armor, which is helpful, but is it helpful enough to delay? by 55 seconds? I don't know, man. That That is uh. really kind of weird. I was expecting, again, again, it's not the most efficient build here from yeah. Yasuo Obs. So Vortex has already got, he's already up to 141 supply, 17 roaches out right now against the three immortals and nine sentries. You normally see a few more sentries with this. It's around the yeah. 10 to 12 mark. Yeah, yeah. So that fourth gas being delayed that slightly. Kinda yeah, hurts. and normally they're a little bit more early, a little bit more often, so you might have that extra two, three force fields in the battle. That can yeah. make a difference. But you know what? He's approaching this just right, right on the edge mm, of the map, which yeah. we sometimes see players mess up. Look at this. Staying on the edge. Here we go. Good force fields going down so far. Those Zerglings, oh, wow. absolute trash right now. <laughs> Oh, wow, he's actually doing a pretty good job so far with these force fields. Yeah, this is rather zealot heavy, and it's actually doing a pretty good job considering the force fields, but now yeah. he has no more force fields. Uh, the roaches are getting in and focusing down. One of the immortals takes him out, not actually microing it with the warp prism to save them. Roaches will have to fall back for now, but still, there's not that much DPS left here for Hasu. No, he needs to warp in a lot of sentries. He needs four more sentries right this second. Just use the rest on zealots. Oh. He needs those force fields, and he needs to be using his warp prism to pick up some immortals. He can't lose another. One. Yeah, if he does, then that is going to be the end of it. So many more roaches on the way. The drone's actually being pulled off here as well. Hasu is in a bit of trouble, if unless he can do massive, uh -oh. massive damage. But he gets oh! focused down. Oh. He actually, did he pick up that immortal? Yes, he did. It is in there, but he's taking way too much damage from these roaches. And despite some beautiful force fields, it looks like Hasuobs will be pushed back. And this is bad news oh. bears right now, man. I yeah. mean, when you lose this immortal <laughs> push, I, he saved two immortals, sure. He has a war prism. He's going to uh, start but dancing around for harassment, right? Maybe. <sighs> and try and take a third somehow, but it's so far behind. Oh, God, yeah. And he starts uh, his robotics bay, which, you know, uh, Colossus, I feel like Colossus against Zerg, I don't, I don't know that this is exactly the timing that he wants. Uh, I just, I don't see this working out very well for Hasuobs. But again, uh, you know, they, 
don't call it the Immortal Sentry all in for nothing. If it no. doesn't work, you are <laughs> in a tight spot. Yeah, you really are, especially with Pathogen Glands now on the way, as well as those Infestors cruising out five in total on the way as well. And, I mean, this is this is sort of... Vortex is so hard to break with the two-base all in. It's, mm -hmm. it's really hard, especially if your timings aren't super, super precise. Yeah, you know, with how well he microed there, I want to say that I think if he had hit that yeah. at the actual timing that some top Korean players can yeah. do, 55 seconds quicker, I think he actually would have broken that and taken the third base because there were times where it was getting close. And with that extra minute, the fact that it was getting close for Vortex, I don't know, man. I, uh, Hasselhoff's just controlled it so well. No, you're right, because... If, if if it hits a little, like, a minute earlier, then Vortex doesn't have as many units. He doesn't force an engagement in that exact position, and then Hasu doesn't have to waste that many force fields yeah. in the initial engagement. And that is crucial. Having that many force fields go down that early on, in that, you have no way to control any more yeah. of these roaches that yeah. are flooding in. Well, uh, what do you think about this? Going into mm. double Robo Colossus as your follow-up, because I look at this, and I think this is brilliant. This is the perfect way. This is a second phase all in. Yeah, this is yeah. this is not he's not trying to transition at all. This is literally like, okay, what do I have to work with? What may catch him off guard? And looking at the spire timing, ah, uh, it might. It could, right? It could, it could. He'll have four colossi out. Or at least I think he will. Three. He's gonna he's okay. gonna hit three, three. but I think ah. I think he has to move out on three yeah, yeah. and start buying stalkers. He should probably not make any more colossi. That extra robo is literally for one more Colossi. He's still only on one one though. Like yeah, no, he's and with plus two carapace finish up, yeah. that is a big deal too. It really is. Zealot's actually going for a little bit of harassment there. Meanwhile, we have the plenty of infestors and roaches and lings just moving around, just having a little bit of a look, seeing if they can spot a third. But he won't. So I mean, Vortex feels really comfortable in this regard right now. Yeah. Just with this massive army and getting his spire and hive behind this, no warp prism around to do some harassment. He, he's feeling pretty good. Yeah, and uh, Hasselhoff looks like he's waiting for that fourth Colossi, but again, I feel that might be the mistake because waiting yeah, for this yeah. fourth Colossi, it's lining up with the Spire finishing, so Corruptors are going to be out pretty quickly here. Uh, he should be starting them literally any second because all he needs to do right now is make a ton of Corruptors and he should hold. Yeah, it really is. And right now we have the Zealots actually moving out. Is there no charge on that? I don't think. No, there no. can't be. They didn't even get Twilight Council for <laughs> plus two. So Greater Spire now morphing in as well as a few more Corruptors coming along. Ten Spines going down. Vortex knows that as long as he holds this, he is in a happy situation in game mm. number one. Well, this is it. This is yeah. the last chance Hasobs has. And he's given himself a, a pretty reasonable chance. And look at this. The fourth Colossus oh. is going to be caught on the rally. A big mistake here waiting for that fourth Colossus proved once and again. Too true. Investors. Terran's going down as well as those force fields. So many units from the Zerg just smashing up against his Protoss army, along with those fungal growths, locking down so much of it. And right now, there's just too much here from Vortex. He doesn't care about the force fields. Yeah. He just keeps overpowering. <laughs> I tell you, man, so <laughs> many fungals and so many infested Terrans is about all the way that you can describe this battle. And Asuov's his supply is falling. He's losing his last few Colossi. And it looks like this game number one is going to go to Vortex. Just fire up G. G, wow. Hasu missing his timing there just a little bit. And as you rightly pointed out, that fourth, I mean, <laughs> your point couldn't have been made any better mm. by having that fourth Colossus yeah. just just sort of caught out in the middle by some Zerglings. If, if a Colossus dies from Zerglings, you know you're going to have a bad time. Yeah, I guess that's, uh, <laughs> that's the new meme of the day right there, man. Uh, he did just slightly, and the thing is, it's hard to know that you're missing that timing by waiting for that fourth Colossus, but you you just, he had to move out a little bit faster, and yeah, without that yeah. e extra Colossus, you know, you can choose. Do you want two more sentries and a, another couple Zealots? Do you want, do you want just uh, four more Stalkers? You know, it's, you really, he'd have a bigger, stronger, quicker push yeah. against no Corruptors, and I feel like that, uh, that, that could have helped him. I don't want to say he would have won. I think he still probably would have lost, but... It gives him a better chance, right? Yeah. I mean, at that point when your two-base all-in fails, you've got to try and just do, some, do, do something, do anything to yeah. get the win. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. You're probably going to lose anyway, so... Mm. <laughs> all right, so we're going to be going into the second game relatively soon here, guys. Uh, the second map is, in fact, going to be Entombed. Yeah. Now, Calaris. Could we possibly see 
Uh, the drop play that Vortex used to be known for so well, but I haven't seen it from him it's, since it's not been WCS Europe at least. Yeah, yeah, it really hasn't been a while. Vortex has just preferred to go for this play uh, with the kind of Ling Roach infested mid game and just grab up those Broodlords. It leaves him in a safer spot. If you go for the drop play, you're, you're saying to your opponent, well, I sure hope your control isn't perfect here. Or like, mm -hmm. or at a very, very top level. Because if it is, you can shut it down as Protoss. So you're leaving that uncertainty factor there, right? Yeah. Whereas if you get Broodlord Infester, I'm not saying you're not leaving the uncertainty yeah. factor there, <laughs> but uh, you're so. Oh, we all know what you're saying, Calaris. <laughs> this <laughs> is this is obvious. <laughs> but <laughs> oh god. You say you play random. I'm not so sure. Yeah. Well, you're 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 <laughs> basically giving yourself a really strong foothold on the game, right? Yeah. So yeah. and Vortex, we already saw. I mean, even if he doesn't have that, even if he just has Infester, Ling, Roach, Corruptor. Yeah. He still has pretty good control. I, I tell you what, I think that you have a really good call there, to be honest, because I look at Vortex, uh, the player that I met uh, truly for the first time in I Am Clone. Yeah, yeah. Intel Extreme oh, Masters God, Clone was a beautiful tournament. It really was. And uh, to see how he's progressed to here, he's become more and more of a solid macro player yep. away from some of the tricky, cool stuff he was doing back then. Mm -hmm. uh, I think you're right. I think that's uh, it's a good call, and I think... Well said, Claris. Thank you very much, Art You're Tokens. so smart. Uh, it's great to be casting with you, man. We are going to be jumping into game number two here in Tombed Valley with our next PVZ of the morning. A big thank you for joining us for the Intel Extreme Master Singapore. And let's jump into the game. As we do have Mr. Vortex going to be spawning up in the top right-hand corner here as our Red Zerg. Currently one game up against the man spawning down in the bottom left-hand corner. His name is Mouse CC Hasuobs. And he is spawning as our blue Protoss. I'm so excited about these groups today. Like, they've actually shaped up really, really nicely. Yeah, they they certainly have, man. I mean, we were going over the groups earlier, and each group has at least three players I really want to see in that bracket phase. And, of course, that fourth group with Oz in it. I can't even believe that he's one of the names I didn't think of. I, I'm going to go ahead and ask you, because, I mean, this is early game. They're cross spots. Yep, it yep. looks like it's going to be pretty standard, so we have some <coughs> downtime. i got to ask you, your pick right now to win the tournament. Uh oh. <laughs> right now, Calaris. This right now, after game one, is it Vortex because you know he's won a game already in the group <laughs> stage, or is it somebody else? I, if if I had to pick, if I had to ask my heart, uh, and I'll I'll have heart answer and I'll have brain answer. Heart answer will be Vortex loose from. Mm -hmm. Either of those two, just because I kind of fell in love with the Spanish scene yeah. from these guys. Um, Brain Answer would actually be either probably Vortex or MC, I think. Oh, okay. You know what? Those are not bad choices. Of course, you could choose uh, MC to win DreamHack, which is going on across yeah, the world yeah. right now. It's still like an okay choice. Even though he's not Because he's MC, right? <laughs> and he just wins tournaments is yeah. what he does. <laughs> but... Uh, yeah, okay. I like your choices because Vortex really, he's coming along. He's going to have a big tournament win soon. Like if Eventually. it's not If it's not this weekend, I think it's in the next three months. He's going to have a big one. He's like at every tournament, and then when he's there, he sort of just gets pipped at the post by all these p the people yeah. who defeat him. Like even Did you say pipped at the post? Pipped at the post. That is so awesome. Dude. But keep going, please. <laughs> but like BWC last week where we were, you know, he yeah. it was 3-2, I believe. 3-2 three, two, with yeah. Creator beating yeah. him. So... I mean, and then he... And then Creator is second place overall, I mean. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, Vortex, he just keeps na narrowly missing out on these uh, very, very big tournament wins. Mm -hmm. So, and again, IEM Cologne, where he was playing, he, he only defe got defeated by, uh, by MVP in the end, where he was crushing yeah. Koreans' Terrans left, right, and center That's with true. his very, very kind of uh, layered aggression center of his builds. Yeah, yeah. All right. It's a good choice, Claris. All right. Thank you. We'll see if that uh, comes to fruition. Now, looks pretty normal so far here while we were jibber-jabbering. Uh, you like that cannon? It's to kill the rocks. He always yeah, does this. Yeah. It's so cool. That's actually funny. Like on Ohana when they wall as the pylon is part of the wall and put the cannon right above it. I'm always yeah. like, oh, obvious. He's going for a third base. It's yep, to kill yep. the rocks. But, yeah, that is uh, that is a tell. And I, I feel like that's something Vortex may be able to look at. Like, oh, mm. third base incoming. And... Let me see what you think about this, because this is actually kind of a cool little metagame thing I've seen on this map. Yeah. It's been done a little bit where Zerg randomly early on makes like an extra eight lings. You know, they may have made four early on. They may have lost one ling so far. Yeah. So that might give them a total of around 11. And 
they go towards the third base mm -hmm. of Protoss and because the one gate expands, that's going to slow you down so much. And if you slow that down at all, I feel like it's powerful. What do you think? Yeah, I would agree. I would agree. Because, you know, one gate expand. How many units are you realistically going to have out there against slings that are running around in circles and not really doing much? Even yeah. if you've got a stalker there, you can't actively sit around just shooting them. You have to it keep all day. Growing. Yeah, it really does take all day. So it's a really, really strong position for a Zerg to be in, I would say. Yeah, I, I like the move. But at the same time, Creator has shown us something with his type of play. Whenever he's doing something like that, that he doesn't want you in his face while he's doing it, he makes a couple early units, whether it's a Zealot and a Stalker with Chrono Boost, or, you know, it goes all the way up to all sorts of combinations, up to two Zealots and three Stalkers, but he will actually throw them at your base, at yeah, your third, yeah, yeah, and will. just make your Lings kill his units over there so that he can get everything up at home. I think also if you end up having those kinds of Lings and you see Hasu doing something like this, I mean, Hasu right now with the cannon doing what it's doing, he has to pay so meticulous attention to his ramp. Otherwise, if you had speed like early for some reason with 12 Lings, mm -hmm. there's the potential that you could actually run up there and be really <laughs> annoying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is true, man. That sounds like things that used to happen in StarCraft 1 all the time. <laughs> Seriously. All right. So taking a look at this. Yep, we got the three gases around 630. That's kind of normal. A lot of Zergs do like that timing. Uh, for our Protoss player, yeah, Haswab's going for his third base. So, yeah, everything is still completely as we would expect. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Hasu on this map... It's, it's a foregone conclusion by now for anybody watching out there that Hasu goes three base on this map. I mean, mm -hmm. most Protoss do some yeah. kind of throw in the two base to get tricky or whatever, but Hasu, it's almost always one gate expand into third base into an extra few gateways to start walling off that third. Yeah. And from there, it provides you such a really nice economical stable build. Um, and you have so much room to do anything. You can go to a three base timing mm -hmm. with four Colossi just before the hive finishes. Um, and, you know, Hasu's one of those guys that will keep an eye on the hive. Yeah. Well, you know what I really like on this map when you take that third base? The three base plus two Blink Stalker attack is so ludicrously good. Yeah. It's so <laughs> unbelievable. It really is. When I watch a good Protoss actually execute that, I think to myself, how do you even stop this? It is so it's awesome. It's that critical but mass of Pro yeah, Stalkers. And it feels like oh. it hits right before you have enough Infestors yeah, to quite yeah. deal with it. So. Do you think that that's more his style? Or, well, he's getting a Robo. Is this going to be a Colossus style? I think uh, Hasu has been, I mean, even in the EPS Germany for the longest time, has been really, really honing down on that double Robo Colossus style. He mm. he really likes that four Colossus yeah. just before what I was saying before with that hive timing. And it it's so strong. It is. It's like, again, you get those four Colossus, and this ties into what you were saying about that Blink build. You have the base of the Stalkers with Blink, with plus two, yeah. and then when your Colossus end up dying, because nine times out of ten they all do end up mm -hmm. dying, you've got that stability of those Stalkers Yes, there. And they're so hard to deal with in those numbers. It's seriously, and you just, from there, the thing is, if they overmake Corruptors too much, then the Colossus dies. And yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah that's nice, but then you have all these Corruptors sitting there, and the Stalkers just kind of kill you. So, I mean, literally... Uh, Pardon my French, but if you're a Zerg <laughs> player playing against this, you must know your shit. Okay, that is the only yeah. way you're taking that build down, man, because it is that powerful. Yeah, it really is. Vortex for now, just grabbing his fourth base here. We have the Spire on the way. Infestation Pit did finish up. And, I mean, I mean, this has been relatively passive, but basically Entomb Valley makes for these scenarios where you get explosive, mm. explosive mid-games and then that long-game potential. So both of these players, guys, are gearing up for what is going to be some pretty epic battles. And also Hasu can incorporate in that Warp Prism Harass, which can be so scary as well. Yeah. Well, we actually have an Immortal on the way. The Robotics hmm. Bait just going down. Will he th Oh, he does it! Oh, Polaris, you know your guys, man. I do, man. The, you and Apollo know these Europeans inside out, I swear. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we need to get some Koreans on here so I can look smart like oh. you. <laughs> well... Look, this Group is AFC, it, man. 15 mutas on the way from Vortex. Now, <gasps> European Zergs are pretty darn good at muta play. Wait, did he make his spot? Oh, I guess gosh. he did, man. Oh. We, we were so busy, like, we just chatting. having a good time. <laughs> well, yeah, so uh -oh. he's making 15 mutas right now, and this is the counter you want against this build. He's, uh, Hasselhoff is going to see these mutas and be so sad. 
You know what's so, worse? So, so sad. I want it to look smart again, because I see Vortex do this all the time. Yeah. It's so brutal as well. You scout out the infestation pit. You're like, oh, great, he's going infestors. Great, that's that's fine. I'll, I'll just do what I want to do. But no, sorry, those mutants are going to swing in. Hasu right now, I'm pretty sure he has no clue. Yeah, this is going to hurt him really, really badly. He's spending so much money right now on Colossus, on those upgrades. Uh. He needs Blink. He does have the Twilight, but oh, God, this is... <laughs> look at this. What These is he going to fight this off with? Yeah. They can't really yeah. reach out. Oh, man. This is this is kind of brutal right now. This is where your heart sinks as a Protoss player. Because while this is a powerful build, it dies to this straight up. Like, yeah, it really you, does. Uh, you have one uh -oh. thing oh. you can do. Oh, my God. Is he just going to lose the Nexus? I think he, he might. might focus down the Nexus. Yeah, he's going to get the Nexus. There's no blink. He's not going to He's not gonna quite save that. If he wants it, he can take this out. I mean, is it technically worth, it's worth sacrificing yeah, I a think few it, it is. It is, definitely. You, you limit so much. I mean, from here, we have to now look at... Oh, he's going to take out the uh, force oh. fielding guys, too, the sentries. That's how I always do that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's like what it is in my brain because I play Protoss. I'm like, yeah, the force fielders, all right. Uh, <laughs> force but fielders. No, this was a really good move because taking out the sentries and that base, he gives him one thing that he can do. Uh, Haswabs can basically do an all-in, which then Vortex decides, do I have enough to kill him, kill his army, or do I do base trade? Because it's going to be one or the other there for him, and it's going to be Vortex's choice. Haswabs doesn't get to choose that. So this is, he's gotten himself into a nice position. Yeah, yeah. And is spining up behind it. It really has. I'm surprised more Zergs aren't really incorporating this because mm. it's so hard to find. Yeah. Just, it's so hard to read. Normally, Zergs just sitting back, getting their infestation pit, feeling happy, but this kind of play is absolutely insane and right now vortex has such a massive lead his economy is skyrocketing in comparison to his opponent he's almost doubling his opponent's income right now so uh, what can has to do from here <laughs> uh again i think it's just gonna be get like a hundred and sixty supply <laughs> and go all in yeah um critical mass stock is trying yeah literally yeah. that's uh, maybe a handful of Colossus because he's killed enough mutas it's like all right i mean the the mutas aren't a big issue but he knows that his economy is so far behind where he wants he's lost enough of his expensive units as well that this is a terrible spot so uh you know vortex i think how this should go is Haswabs comes up on the left side of the map, yeah. probably ends up killing the fourth, yeah. but by then Vortex should have enough to just kill everything off. He's going to go with these two Colossus, isn't he? Because yeah. he sees the hive morphing in. He knows it's there, yeah. so he has, and he knows it's finished. So he has to now... <laughs> he has to go. If he lets the Great Aspire finish, and if he lets Broodlords out, yeah. he's dead. There's no way he can combat this no, right there's, now. There, there's nothing. I mean, even with the great mobility of your army with all the Blink Stalkers and everything, you're going to have a terrible time. Yeah. One thing working for him is that, that Great Aspire is over in a funny location on top of the ramp in the top <laughs> left. So, Oh, God, that's What if true. he were to find that? I don't... The thing is, Protoss doesn't know... He might send, like, a single Zealot up there just to check that there's not a base, but I feel like... If you he'd know, have gone for Warp Prism Harass, I mean, he's doing it now, yeah. but if he'd have gone for it earlier on, chances are he might have flown over Could have, could have. And then, well, but that's by the by. So for now, he's going to move right. out into the middle of the map. He's got that 160 supply, and he is going for it. And, in fact, Vortex right now, just trying to buy some time. I would actually just not even look at these Zerglings if I was Hasuobs right now. Uh, he does eliminate them, but every second... Oh. that Vortex can buy is worthwhile. Yeah, and because of the Spire placement, he doesn't quite know the time. He should know it. I mean, once the Hive morphs in, the Zergs are instantly like, quick, Great Aspire, Great Aspire, mm -hmm. Great Aspire. But, I mean, he's now moving out. He needs to find this location. All Vortex has to do is delay. And with this movement out, he's, is he bringing the Warp Prism as well? No, he's sending it around the other side. He's running out of time here. Yeah, this is <sighs> rough, man. Ten Broodlords on the way. He is going up this left side of the map to try to eliminate this base. Vortex looks like he may try to hold it. I feel like he should just wait till his broods are. Don't waste all that infester energy. That's that's the one thing Haswabs really wants right now is for him to throw down a lot of infested Terrans. Yeah, but those 10 Broodlords are now out and about. There They're on go. the way to actually crush this entire army if they want to. He needs to blink forward and somehow try and kill them off. But even still, Fungals go down, locking down almost the entire force. Meanwhile, some Zealots actually doing some harassment, but it doesn't look like it's going to be enough yeah. here. Hasu is absolutely devastated. Yeah, it looks like his game is coming to an end here. Uh, I don't know that there is anything left for him, really. He's got 65 probes, three bases. He's losing the last of his tech. 
I mean, he's picking off some some infestors, which is nice, but his army consists of three zealots and a war prism. Yeah, it's not really looking too good. Almost double the supply there right now for Vortex. Vortex can quite easily march on. He doesn't really have to care too much about those zealots. He can quite easily just rally back the reinforcements to actually kill those off. And if he just pushes across the map right now, Hassi just has nothing. He's getting a few Colossi out. He's getting a few Stalkers. But realistically, that army of Vortexes is just so invulnerable. Yeah. Uh, this is the death march that we're watching yeah. right here. Uh, you know, he still has a few infestors on there, but that doesn't even really matter. The Broodlords alone at this point should be able to kill everything off. There's only 10 stalkers. Sure, a couple Colossi are coming out, but he's not even going to be able to finish this this upgrade. It's... Uh, uh, Hasu Obs. I mean, for all the nuances that he shows on Entombed Valley, I think Hasu Obs, I mean... If I can predict Hasuobs on this map, mm -hmm. I think maybe Vortex might also be able to predict Hasuobs on this map pretty well. And there you go. GG, guys. Vortex will take the swift and very strong 2-0 here over Hasuobs. And despite me being great friends with Hasuobs and potentially on the same team as well, I'm kind of not surprised. Vortex yeah. is just a monster. No, I, Vortex is sick good, as we've been saying. You know, Hasuobs is a very good player as well. He actually, guys, didn't expect to play this term. He was hired as a That's commentator, yeah. came down. Uh, Killer from Dignitas wasn't able to make it, so uh, Carmack asked him nicely if he would mind playing in that group. And, I mean, so he didn't even have his equipment coming down here, so cheers to yeah. him for even putting in the effort to do this, and he's going to be commentating later, too. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, he's got his group today, but over the next couple days, so a really full weekend for him, Yeah, yeah. Uh, especially if he makes it further. He got hooked up with new gear by Razor here in Singapore. Yeah. The keyboard Cheers he's using them. isn't even the same keyboard he uses at home, which yeah. I am a, it, for a pro gamer is a big deal, right? Oh, it's a terrible thing. I wouldn't even have done it, but... <laughs> um, I mean, yeah, uh, cheers to Hasuobs, yeah. uh, a great guy for doing that. But Vortex, he does win this match. And now I'm all excited because guess what we get to cast next? Ooh, I would love to. I can't actually remember. Who he MC told me. against Mafia. Oh, this How is, sick is that? How, how sick is that, seriously? These games, uh, I mean, just the lineup that we have for Group A and Group B, for this, which is what we're casting now, is is actually just really good. I mean, there's not much way else to put it other yeah. than really good. So, guys, get on Twitter and hashtag IEM. We want a lot of people watching this. I hope that you guys are enjoying. I'm having a great time. How about you, Calaris? I am as well. It's a pleasure to be casting alongside Mr. Artosis here. Indeed, go on Facebook.com, Twitter, and YouTube slash IEM for all your Intel Extreme Masters needs. And also, you can follow this handsome gentleman at Artosis on Twitter. And he's at Calaris. He's got to get more followers. He only has like 5,000. I, I think I just hit 5,000, actually. Sick. I'm Go sure. and follow so Calaris. thank you very much, guys. He's 5, a very 000. good commentator, really knows his stuff. So, guys, we're going to throw to a little commercial here. Uh, but we'll be back really soon because I just want to do as many games as possible today. Yes. So stay tuned. This is the Intel Extreme Masters in Singapore.